Welcome to Episode 3 of Wissican School District's Community Connections. Now, moving back to another intersection along 73, Center Square, you'll see Reed's Country Store. Now, Reed's Country Store was on the cover of a Saturday Evening Post magazine in May of 1949. There was an illustration, and it hangs today, a replica of that magazine cover in Reed's Country Store. In fact, there are some people alive that know many of the people who were depicted on the cover of that magazine. The illustration shows Reed's Store, which was a general store. You could purchase food, clothing, hardware. It, it was a early Walmart, so to speak, back in uh, the early 1900s. Well, Reed's store was right across from a firehouse. The firehouse today is uh, in a newer building, a little further down 73. But at that intersection, Reed's store, the Center Square firehouse, and what is not shown is where the present-day Wawa exists. There was a John Deere tractor sales company there. Now, this this illustration shows the firehouse alarm being set and the number of the community uh, businessmen racing out of stores and a police officer directing traffic in the intersection and the fire engine is on its way to a blaze somewhere in the community. Well, it is the type of art that is a great example of the Norman Rockwell style of drawing back in the 1940s and 1950s. Although this is not done by Norman Rockwell, it was done by a fellow whose name is Stephen Donahue. But it's a, a fun sort of remembrance of the community and when it was and how it developed. If you travel up 202 toward Coleman's and Normandy Farms Estate, you'll see on the right the Montgomery County Community College. A sign points out its founding in 1964. Well, it wasn't always at that site. For 10 years, from 64 to 74, Montgomery County Community College was in an old house in Conshohocken. The community college form of education was started in the 60s and took a while to catch on, but today the Montgomery County Community College is one of the most respected community colleges, not just in Pennsylvania, but along the East Coast. And they found themselves back in the early 70s having an enrollment problem, so they purchased some land at the time that these Normandy farms were breaking up into private ownership and purchased from Stroudsburg, the land where now present-day Montgomery County Community College exists. If you travel down Morris Road, and Morris Road is an interesting road which parallels Bethlehem Pike and Skipback Pike, Morris Road was named after Robert Morris. He was a financier of the American Revolution. And you know, he lived in a house right down near Germantown Academy off of Sheaf Lane. Robert Morris had a country estate on Sheaf Lane, and he built that estate in order to live there in, in the summers where it was cooler out here and he escaped the heat of the city of Philadelphia. And of course, this is back in the early 1800s when, of course, air conditioning was not available. So as you travel down Morris Road and make a left onto Penlin Am at Bluebell Pike, you'll come in to the community of Penn Lynn, which is interesting sort of community in how it was founded. Unlike Ambler, which was developed through the mills and the railroad, Penn Lynn developed in a unique way. Gwynedd Valley, or Gwynedd Valley, Gwynedd Township, Lower Gwynedd Township, was founded in 1698. Now, it was the home of many large farms and estates owned by wealthy millionaires uh, whose names such as Ingersoll and Taylor settled in Gwynedd Valley. These estates had beautiful homes and they had a number of servants that lived in these homes and were maids and butlers and chauffeurs. They had farmers who worked the, the land in order to uh, supply the needed vegetables and eggs and the the food for the millionaires. Now, many of these millionaires, these were ge gentlemen estates where they either had their money inherited to them or they worked in Philadelphia by 
jumping the train each morning and traveling into Philadelphia to their various businesses and then would come back in the later evening to their estate. One of these wealthy individuals, his last name was Pershing, and he was a career military officer. He rose to the rank of general and served in the United States Army during the time of World War I. His nickname, General Blackjack Pershing, was given that nickname because he commanded African-American troops. The African-American troops that served under him would battle in France and against the Axis powers of World War I and were known as soldiers who were heroes and soldiers who were dedicated to defeating the enemy, but also dedicated to their leader, General Pershing. The military at that time was segregated, and there were white troops, and then there were black troops. So General Pershing became so close to his soldiers that at the time when the war was over, and the troops found themselves returning to America, General Pershing had an idea that he would offer to the soldiers that served under him a plot of land on his estate that laid along the Wissahickon Creek. And these soldiers, if they were willing to take this, this land, they could construct their own homes and live in a community which had the camaraderie of soldiers who had served together in war. These soldiers took this on, and the community of Penn Lynn was formed. This was a community not part of a town or a neighborhood, but this was a community of very modest, middle-class homes, and these soldiers who constructed these homes lived in this community named Penn Lynn, and General Pershing's home was right on the border of that uh, community. It has long since been torn down and newer homes been constructed. But today, as you approach Penn Lynn train station on Penn Lynn Bluebell Pike, you'll see a street off to the right, which is Pershing Drive, named after General Pershing as a tribute to him. Now, if you head further, down to Spring House, you'll see the Spring House Tavern. Again, an inn years ago, which had rooms in the second and third floor, which were rented out, and the community of Spring House was built around the Spring House Tavern. It's owned by Jim Burns, whose father, George Burns, founded the, the Spring House Tavern, and Jim Burns is a graduate of Wissahickon High School back in 1968, I believe. This ends Episode 3 of Wissahickon School District's Community Connections. Please tune in to Episode 4.